cards. Uh, wait a second. Uh, uh, uh. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, so we're gonna hunt some unicorns, but we're not gonna use a bow and arrow. We're gonna use um, right. We're gonna use a string, an array, and a hash. Right? So, if you haven't figured out, this isn't going to be an archery lesson. It's going to be a computer programming lesson. Um, yeah, maybe go back to the beginning and push play again. Anyways, jumping right in, I'm John Davison, co-founder, CEO, founder, ex-founder, future founder, and investor in Startup Landia LLC. And I'm going to walk you through some Ruby basics. So here we are at StartupLandia.io, right, where I talk about all kinds of interesting things like ocean swimming, craft cocktails, and fried chicken. But in this moment, we're going to talk about teaching people to code, right? And if you click that link, StartupLandia.io slash learn to code, you'll see a bunch of flowery prose that really doesn't mean anything, but I enjoy writing it and saying it. And you'll see this teeny, teeny, teeny little hyperlink that a growth hacker wouldn't like because it's not enough call to action. Anyways, if you click that button, you'll see we go to GitHub, right? And there's a bunch of code, including, oh, look, Ruby Array, Ruby Hash, Ruby String. Now, here we are in my terminal on the right-hand side of the screen. You know what? Let's make the text a little bit bigger. How about that? Yes. Here we are in my home directory. And, ah, yes, let's revisit the unicorn hunting directory. Ah, there we are. There's unicorns.rb, which, um, yeah, that one was kind of useless. So let's get rid of it. rm unicorns.rb. Boom, there we go. And now let's actually clone this, um, uh, yeah, let's clone this repository. And to clone the repository, repository being a fancy word for a bunch of code stored somewhere on the etherwebs, git clone, and then you can literally paste in the kooky looking link. It's not a hyperlink, but it's kind of like a link. Anyways, um, there we go. It cloned, and when I say it, I mean my machine. It cloned a bunch of objects, and it took some time. And now, in our directory, highlighted in blue with the little slash to indicate it's a directory, we have the fundamentals of web programming. So let's enter that directory, fundamentals of web programming, and what do we have? All kinds of stuff that looks like just like the same stuff over here in the githubs. Anyways, um, yeah, let's open the entire directory in Adam, our friendly code editor. And when I say entire directory, notice that I've typed the word Adam, which is going to bring up the Adam program, but I'm also adding the little period, right? Which vaguely resembles this little guy that I'm highlighting here, the little period in the slash, right? Well, the little period is Unix speak for the current directory, right? It's a symbolic link that represents the user's current location. As if I said, hey, Adam, I want to open up my apartment. And I pushed dot. And Adam would understand that the little dot represented my current location in my apartment. Anyways, here we go. Bing, bang, bong. And here we are in Atom, hopefully for you, it will open the files on the left. If it doesn't, I believe you can type shift command P, and then you can type toggle, and this whole tree view thing, right? And so that got rid of the files. Let's do shift command P again, toggle tree view. Boom, there we go. Uh, we're going to start with a string, right? And to work through this content, uh, notice I'm back in the console. We're going to enter into a Ruby interactive shell, also known as IRB. IRB, interactive Ruby, right? And we're going to go from top to bottom in this file and just see kind of how things go. Uh, yeah, so order equals wings. Ooh, whoops, I pushed enter. 
I pushed enter again. So I'm going to push control C and I'm going to do that over order equals wings, right? The string is indicated by the beginning single quotation mark and the ending single quotation mark. Boom. We could do something like puts order, right? Uh, we get wings. Uh, very interestingly, if we did P order, we also get wings, but it has a different return value, which is a topic I'm not going to cover in this moment, but is monumentally important to understand. At a future point in time, maybe I'll record a rap about the difference between puts and P, and about how weird and complicated it can be to understand it. Anyways, let's keep going. Other order equals fries. Let's do double quotes. See, you can do double quotes. And then we have puts other order. Boom. Fries. So let's do combo order number one equals order plus other order. Notice how we can use the plus, plus sign to put two strings together. That's called concatenation. Puts combo order one. Bing, wings, fries. So now we're going to look at something called interpolation. Combo order two equals open double quote and then hash mark open brace. Now we're going to insert the value of the order variable inside of another string. And if you could believe it, we're also going to interpolate the value of other order variable into our string, right? And now we have a little space. And so we have puts combo order two, bing, wings, and fries. Okay. But what if uh, we don't like fries? Uh, let's make another combo order. 3 is equal to the return value of substituting the word fries with waffles and syrup. How are we going to do that? Combo order 2 dot sub. We're going to enter a search term in these funny little brackets that indicates a regular expression. And now we're going to tell our method dot sub to substitute the, the search key fries with waffles with syrup. And then we're going to close the paren on the function call. Boom. Let's put combo order three wings waffles with syrup. Isn't that amazing? You are almost ready to hunt unicorns. Uh, excessive order equals wings with fries and more fries and even more fries, fries, fries. Oh, I spelled that one wrong. Fries, fries. And now, uh, let's say we want to improve our order by getting rid of the fries and substituting them with carrots. We could do sub fries, and we'll substitute it with carrots, right? Uh, but notice there's still a bunch of fries, right, in the order because sub only changed one occurrence of the phrase fries. So let's assign a new variable. Best order equals excessive order dot g sub, which means global substitution. It will replace all occurrences of fries instead of just one with carrots. Right, in uh, carrots, whatever. Let's do celery. Mm. Wow, so now there are no more fries in the order because we substituted them all out. Isn't that amazing? Let's put best. If that wasn't the most amazing thing you have ever seen, you are not ready to be a real 
Unicorn Hunter. Just kidding. It will get a lot more interesting as time goes by. Uh, we just have to kind of walk through the basics. Anyways, let's define a local method called describe order. And we are going to say that our local method accepts a parameter called order. And if the value of the order is equal to carrots, uh, then we are going to return the order and we're going to concatenate a string that says are the best. Uh, yes, uh, otherwise we are going to return um, order plus are the worst. Uh, I should rename this to the leg method. We're going to end that if statement and now we're going to end the method definition and hopefully we will get a little symbol back from the Ruby interpreter that says, hey, now I understand that we have a method called describe order that we can call on. Boom, that little symbol guy, this means we now have a method called describe order. And let's try to describe uh, carrots a, oh, undefined method describe, because the method is called describe order. Carrots are the best. Uh, what if we do waffles and carrots? Isn't that sort of like carrots? And no, because if you look, our method uses order equals carrots. So the value of the input has to be exactly carrots. It can't be carrots and other things. Yes. Anyways, so let's keep going. Uh, so here we have some order. Oh. I'm a little out of sequence. Some order equals hamburger. Now nah, we're not even going to do that. We're just going to keep moving. Um, yeah, so an important idea to understand with a string is that every single character is important. And every single character it, it lives in a position, also referred to as the index position of the character. So let's take uh, some order. I don't think we have a variable. So let's define some order equals a uh, hamburger. Some order. And if we want the first character, right, we need to run a method, some order. And notice how I'm calling these little bracket things. The brackets are Ruby shorthand for, hey, tell me the index position, uh, or tell me the value in the index position in a string. And if I insert the integer 0, that tells Ruby to, hey, retrieve the value at the 0 index position of the string. And you might be asking yourself, well, why isn't it 1? Well, there's some old school ha-ha-ha jokes about, like, making things more efficient by starting at zero rather than one that occurred in the 70s and maybe that got picked up in the 80s and then maybe that got picked up by Ruby 2. I don't really know the whole story but most things in Ruby start with the letter, excuse me, they start counting at the number zero. Some order, right? And if we want to look at the last letter we can do a negative one, right? That's a R. And we can even do something like a range. We could do 0, dot, dot, 2. That starts to look like ham, burr, grr, whatever. We're not going to go the whole way. Um, yeah, so let's define a new variable. Healthy order equals kale chips with vegan brownies. Boom. And we are going to define a variable, iterations, equal to the length of the healthy order string. And now, iterations, the value is 30. And so we're just going to experiment with a Ruby block, because this is really important. So let's do iterations.timesdo. 
open a pipe to define a variable that we can use inside of our block and we're going to call that integer right it, and then we're going to put the value of the integer boom and we're going to put uh, the letter healthy order and we're going to look up the value of the individual letter integer yep and let's finish that and boom see it doesn't look like overly interesting but we just wrote a little program that prints out the index position and the associated value in that index position so if we were to run this same program over we did I'm pushing up arrow by the way uh, I could literally do iterations dot times do puts a uh, healthy order healthy order given integer and we won't print the index we'll just push enter and finish this program so you can see that we now get a vertical list of all the little print letters printed out on a line okay uh, what if we want to go the other direction and we want to print kale chips with vegan brownies but we want to do it backwards right well instead of starting at the zero position we can start at the entire length and subtract the value of the integer and we'll basically go right to left rather than left to right it's a really important comp uh, idea to get sensitive to in programming uh, we go right and left through things and that's usually done basically by looking at ordinal numbers right the first the second the third the fourth and the fifth and we can just as easily go from the tenth the ninth the eighth the seventh and the sixth so on and so forth so let's do something like iterations dot times do we're gonna sh make that int just to be clever this time we'll put int and then we will put the value of healthy order and we are going to do something like healthy order dot length minus integer minus int and we're also going to do minus one because if you remember correctly uh, since we start with a zero indexed string if the first occurrence of the int variable is a zero then we would be looking at something like 30 minus 0 minus 1 or 30 minus 0 which actually wouldn't get us where we wanted to go we want to be at 30 uh, minus 1 minus 0 which would be 29 I hope I said that correctly and boom, kale chips with vegan brownies, brownies. Um, yeah, and let's do that over and we can look at it without printing the integer. And we'll just do that put statement. Boom, kale chips with vegan brownies backwards. All right, that is left to right iteration and right to left iteration and if you see me do those and you're like wow that seems like kung fu it is kung fu but that's not what this lesson is all about okay i'm john davison the founder future former investor and sole proprietor of startup landia llc wait a second should we just keep going should we stop should we take a break i don't know let's keep going mm. Yeah, uh, so we are going to quickly switch <sighs> to the array. Arrays are amazing. I mean, look at this first array. Isn't that just epic? Things, look, things, right? Things equals array. Things dot class. It's an array. What's an array? An array is a container that holds things, right? Let's actually just cut and paste this guy. Things equals blah, 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 John, Jane, happy, nil, false, hash, array. Wait a second. There's an array inside of an array? Yes, there's an array inside of an array. There's all kinds of stuff. 
Um, interestingly enough, just like a string, we can look things up, print things based on the index position, 0, 1, 2, 3. So what do we expect p things 3 to give us back? I bet it's nil. Boom, it's nil because nil is in the fourth position. Oh, wait, but we just said things 3. Yeah, well, think about it. 0, 1, 2, 3. Fourth position, 0 is the first position. It's actually... Um, it's a little bit like housing and floors in Italy, right? The ground floor is like the zero floor, and the first floor is usually the first floor up, right? Um, I don't know if ancient Italians planned it that way. I'm going to go with no, but I bet they would argue yes, which I would be supportive of. Anyways, let's keep moving. What if we want to look at the last thing in our things? Just like a string, we can do things negative 1, and look, we get our array back, because here when we define things, the last thing we defined was an empty array. Okay, bing, bang, bong. Uh, let's redefine our variable iterations to be equal to things dot length, 7, boom, right? Um, yeah, iterations dot times... Do int boom p things given int boom boom right John Jane happy nil false hash array all the different things inside of our array and just like going left to right and right to left with a string captain we can do it with an array. Uh, yeah, that's a terrible accent. I probably should avoid it, but you know who doesn't love Scotty. Um, anyways, iterations dot times uh, do integer. We'll do int again, and we will do <clears throat> we will define a variable index position equal to things dot length minus the int minus one, right? Put a little space in there just because it's easier to read. And then we will p, right, things. But instead of passing in the integer, we'll pass in the variable index position, right? And if you notice, I'm beginning to show you how abstraction works. Things represent other things. Very, very important in computer programming. And now you'll notice that the return of that little program that we just wrote was all these different little things. We went first left to right, then right to left. Boom. Um, um, so on and so forth. Let us define an array called people that has some people's names in it, as you might imagine. And then we are going to call people.each, dot each being one of the most common Ruby methods. It's a block. It, it, uh, it iterates over the array. It basically does something to each little thing inside the array. And it runs the block of code on each little thing inside the array. And the variable person, each time the code replicates and does something over and over, it represents the thing inside the array that we want to work on. So people.each.do person, and now we're inside of our thing. And we're going to print a string that uses some uh, interpolation, right? Here's the interpolation, person. Close the string. Boom! this person's name, Jane, John, Jim, Jenny. So like, you know, when you like open your email and somebody sent you something that's obviously some like bad advertisement and they try to use your name to be like really personable, but you're like, actually, that's just kind of annoying and I don't like it. But this is the magic unicorn skills that they used to send that email to you with. Okay, so um, yeah, what else do we have to do? Uh, other people people equals people dot each do person bing uh, person dot reverse what's that gonna do it's gonna scramble things it basically takes the string dot reverse it calls dot reverse oh dot reverse reverse 
there you go, Nodge. It's funny, actually, people call me, used, used, college used to call me Nodge. No one calls me that anymore, hopefully for good reasons. Um, yeah, P, other people, other people. Uh, so let's do something, whoops, let's do something like puts other people, bing, jing, jam, jummy, so on and so forth. Um, you might be noticing that the variable other people isn't actually equal to the scrambled names, right? Because the return value uh, of dot each is actually the original thingy, the original object, in this case the original array that we iterated on. If we actually want to return a new array, we have to use a method called uh, map which returns something totally different. So we'll do scrambled people equals people, P-E-O, P-L-E dot map, do peep, 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 and we'll do peep dot reverse, peep, and boom. And now if I put scrambled people, now we have an array of all those names scrambled. This is the magic unicorn part. Yes, scrambled arrays. I like it. Um, anyways, and an interesting way to check the equality is p are people equal to scrambled people? And no, right? That's important, right? We just verified something. We used our computer to verify, are these two things equal? Which we knew they weren't, but imagine there was a million things in the array. You don't want to look at each one. That would take for the rest of our life. And the whole point of programming is to give ourselves more time, right? Yes. Anyways, let's keep going. Uh, here we are at the bottom of the file, and uh, we're going to define a method called create funny sentence that uses the very interesting Ruby method inject. Inject is a method that accepts an object, it does things to that object, and then it gives you that new object back possibly if you use it correct. It can be a little weird to use it first, but anyways, let's just dig right in def create funny sentence. Is that sentence spelled right? I don't think so. I think sentence has a sentence. Sentence. Ah, yeah. Anyways, it is spelled right. P-E-O-P-L-E. Uh, boom. People.inject. We're going to send an empty string into this method, do, and we're going to define two, two variables, sentence and person. The person variable refers to each person as we go through the array, and the sentence refers to that little string that we just sent into the inject method. And now we're going to do something like sentence, uh, boom, we're going to use the double quote so that we can use interpolation. Look at, boom, person, go, boom, boom, and then we are going to return sentence, boom, boom. Ah, look, Ruby knows we now have a method called create funny sentence. And so I'm going to say new peeps uh, equals JJ uh, Abrams because he makes great movies, and that's probably a misspelling of his name. John D. Uh, we'll go with Jane Doe. Jane D. And um, yeah, Mad Max because he's a good dude too. Uh, let's do something like create funny sentence and we will give the create funny sentence method we'll call it and we will pass it the new peeps variable let's push enter and hope my computer doesn't blow up 
uh, look at that. Is that not magic? Look at J.J. Abrams go. Look at John D. go. Look at Jane D. go. Look at Mad Max go. Phenomenal, right? Yes. And by the way, you are talking to a dude wearing a penguin hat. Anyways, um, moving right along, there are some very useful array methods. Uh, people dot pop. What do you think dot pop does? It does like what it sounds. Pop. It takes something and it breaks it off. Ah! It broke off the last thing in the array and now people array is only three things. Right? Well, what if we want to put something into the array? Well, we could do people dot push uh, John D's cousin. I don't have a cousin. Actually, I have cousins. And now the people array got a new thing at the end. Uh, people dot shift. Well, what do we think shift does? Shift, shift, shift. I don't know. Let's let's run it. Boom! It gave us Jane. Huh? Jane was the first name in the array. What do we think might have happened to the array? Ah, look! The array is lacking one thing at the beginning, right? Um. Yeah, and what if we want to put a new uh, person at the beginning of the array? Well, we could do people dot unshift, and we could do Lizzie D, who's my sister, because she's smarter than me anyway, so she should always be at the beginning. Lizzie D, John, Jim, John D's cousin, right? There we go. That's the Ruby array. Let's do hashes. Yeah, hashes. Ruby hash. Um, the hash can be a little bit perplexing to work with in the beginning, but it's an uber important data structure. And by data structure, I mean some interesting sort of structure that has data inside of it, right? Think about the data structures that you interact with in your world. Um, a filing cabinet, a trapper keeper, uh, index cards, mm, Books, all kinds of things are data structures. There's a structure that occurs in frequency and it has data in it. Uh, Ruby uses hashes, which are a series of key value pairs. And if you don't know what that means, don't worry, we will be revisiting it always. Person, right? Person dot class, whoops is a hash, right? And uh, we can access a hash with this little bracket thing, just like our array lookup and just like our string lookup. But instead of an index position, um, a hash orders things based on key value pairs, right? And in this case, uh, we could say person.keys and we'll see what all the keys are, right? And if we say person dot values, uh, happy person. And if you look back at our original person definition, you see like name happy person comma eye color blue comma address five hundred Fell Street comma happy true sad maybe. The key would be name eye color address happy and sad, and the value happy blue. 500 fell true, maybe, those all go together. So let's say we want to know the value of the name. So we can provide name in symbol form, symbol, person, colon, name. Boom, undefined method person for main object. Oh, that's because I used the wrong kind of method call. So we need to use these brackets to do a key lookup person colon name happy person boom what about eye color eye color boom blue 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 anyways moving right along let's define this other hash boom Item, name, thing, location, siblings. Oh, wait, wow, look. Siblings points to an array, and parent points to another hash. Whoa, hash inside of a uh, hash, an array inside of a hash? Yes, and Ruby 
you could do like a bajillion hashes inside of a bajillion arrays and Ruby doesn't care. It's one of Ruby's strong points. It's just got all kinds of internal flexibility. Um, let's do lock this captain item name and item parent. There we go. And we could even do something like access the new hash that was returned by basically doing a joined key lookup. Boom. Let's do that again with a little bit smoother. Boom. There we go. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so here we are in our car. Boom. Um, yeah. Somewhere in California. Yada, yada, yada. P car given name. Boom. Oh, interesting. Uh, yeah, we used a different kind of key lookup. So in this case, we actually have to provide the full value as it's written. And then we get what we want. Yes. And so, just like going left to right in a, in a string or an array, we can go left to right and iterate, keyword being iterate, on the hash. Why am I so kooky about these words? Because vernacular and programming is really important. It is how you learn to build clear models and how you communicate those models to other people uh, is probably one of the more important skills in computer programming in a modern context, right? What is your model? How do you communicate that model both to a machine? How do you communicate that model to another programmer? So in all my videos, I'm just relentless about picking words that actually mean what they mean, and the meaning is an accurate meaning. That's a, that's a definition using its own definition. Yep, and um, actually using the right words. Anyway, so we keep going, and we'll call this key and value. Boom. And we're going to make a string. This is the cars. Uh, let's do some interpolation. Key and its value. Boom. Value. Value. Spelled correctly. Close the string. Boom. Push end. Boom. This is the car's name and its Chevy. This is the car's motor type and its combustion. This is the car's location and it's, uh, it looks like an array. Yeah, so Ruby does an interesting thing called like object coercion, right? Ruby doesn't inherently know before you run the method that, hey, we're going to pass the value of location into a string, but that's an array. So it's going to have to just automatically coerce an array to be inside of a string, and it's not always a perfect science. So in this case, we got this uh, sort of uh, somewhere in California thing. Okay, so that is a super brief but fun look at a Ruby string array and a hash. These are the three core data types and a few other data types that you may have noticed like booleans and symbols and integers that you are going to need to learn how to become an amazing web programmer, i.e. once you become an amazing web programmer, we can then go hunt unicorns together. I am John Davison, the first future and only founder investor in Startuplandia LLC. Um, have a great evening.